an age-old question. Are we headed the right direction in life? Sometimes the answer can be found in our dreams, such as the case in the sleep time vision dissected in this episode of Reawakening, the dream interpretation podcast with dream expert and spiritual life coach Yvonne Reba. I'm your host Chris Mann and this month Yvonne looks at the first in a series of two dreams sent in by one of her clients. The first dream occurred a few months prior to the client's second marriage, and the second dream, which we'll look at next month, happens a few months after the second marriage's wedding date. The first dream is especially emotional and involves going the wrong way, being ticketed by a policeman, finding comfort in a real estate agent, and seeing a sign of hope in, of all things, a cactus. What does it all mean? Let's check in with Yvonne to find out. Hi there, Yvonne. How are you? Hi there, Chris. I'm fine, thank you. Wonderful. Well, what do you have for us this month? Well, I have the first in a series of dreams from one person. Great. And I'm going to read you the first one, and next month we'll do the second. Perfect. This is a dream that was, let's see, it's about uh, not, not a year and a half ago, perhaps a year and three or four months, that the dreamer, very attractive woman, who was not at this point married, but was going out with this really nice guy, and it had a very bad marriage before that. Anyway, she is going through this tumultuous time before she gets married, and she had this dream. Then later on, there's another dream we'll do next time, where she is married, and she's having some other feelings. So we'll look at that another time. Great. Okay? Yeah, I like to follow the story, you know? Yes, it's very good. And I hear from her regularly. She's a very good dreamer. Great, wonderful. Uh, and then it helps a lot when you know the way that people's lives are going. You can sort of see clearly what the dreams are about. Sometimes you have to dig around a bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here we go. Here is the dream, and it comes from December of 2014. She didn't get married again until the March of last year, so this is before she got married. Great. In the dream, I was with the boy's dad. Now, let me paraphrase this. The boy's dad, the boys are grown up now, but she had a very bad marriage with this man, and she brought the boys up by herself. Okay, so in the dream, she's with the boy's dad, asking him if I could quit work, if we had enough money, and could work out a way. Now, she said he looked at me in a mean way. Huh. I think he probably was mean when they were married. Yeah. So the next part, I'll read the whole dream, and then I'll tell you what I got. Everybody friends and so on, were gathered around a table playing a game. I left my car and was driving the wrong side of the street down, which is put 1960s. 1960s in Houston. It's a busy, busy road. Uh, It's not a freeway. It's got lots of traffic lights on it. And believe me, you don't want to be going the wrong way on it. Right. So anyway, she's driving down the wrong side of the street and a policeman comes towards me and saw me and said, pull over, you are going to jail. She said, I was so scared, I pulled over. And then we went into a place, and he wrote me a ticket. There was a real estate lady there. I burst into tears, sobbing and weeping. And then the cop had pity on me, and the real estate lady tried to comfort me. So he let her off. He didn't give her the ticket. She said, I walked down the sidewalk to my car. I heard music playing coming from a clubhouse that was closed, and the music was being piped outside. I remember there was some ornate cactus in the subdivision. There's clubhouses in the subdivision, obviously. And she saw these ornate cactus there. Mm-hmm. So, And that was the end of that dream. Okay. Succinct, but really kind of a lot happening there. Very. Sometimes it seems to me a short dream, but when you come to analyze it, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So, and this is my meaning, okay, what I got out of this. And she agreed with me when I sent it back to her, because this is all by email. Oh, I love that you have the feedback then. That's good. It confirms. Yes, it is. Okay. So I am with the boy's dad, asking if I could quit work if we had enough money and could work out a way to do that. And he looked at me mean. Okay, so I wrote, it sounds like you're comparing your life then, that time with him, mean and no one around that seemed to be there to help you. And she is comparing her life then with, 
I'm going to get married again. What is it going to be like? Right. I don't remember what it was like before, and it's scary. I'm putting myself in a very vulnerable position here. Yes. Okay. So then she wrote, everyone, friends and so on, were gathered around the table playing a game. Now, I said, well, you know, the people around you are not helping at all. They're all playing some kind of a game, which when you put it into our everyday language, people playing games with you, they're not on the straight, okay? They're not doing the, what they should be doing. They're against you in some way. They're ignoring you. So she was feeling, again, very vulnerable. She got into a car and was driving on the wrong side of the street down 1960, like I said. Really, you would not get very far in 1960 going the wrong way before you hit somebody. Right. A lot of space here. Right. So that's an easy thing for us to get because when you've done dream interpretation for a while, you know going down the street the wrong way in a car means you're in life that you're not doing something the right way, that you're going the wrong way. And you know you're going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. All right? You're scared. Mm -hmm. Well, here, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? She's thinking about this. Well, of course, it pops a policeman, comes towards her, tells her to pull over. You're going to jail, he says. She got really scared. She burst into tears, sobbing and weeping. They go into this place. He writes her this ticket, and there's a real estate lady there. But when she's crying and sobbing, the cop has pity on her, and the real estate lady tries to comfort her. So when you're dreaming, and then you start to burst into tears and so on, you're letting your real emotions come out, okay? And the cop, and we've done this before, but people in authority in dreams usually represent your own higher self, your conscience, if you like, your guardian angel, whatever you want to call it. The thing that is trying to get you to go the right way, the way that brings you happiness, fulfillment, keeps you on the straight and narrow, whatever you want to call it. That's what the policeman, the doctor, it can be a prison guard. I've heard people have dreams they're in prison. Okay, well, they've imprisoned themselves in their own way in some life that they're having in that moment, perhaps their job or their marriage or whatever, and the prison guard might represent the higher self. But here the cop has pity on her, and the real estate lady tries to help her too. Now, she's got this emotional outburst. The higher self says, ah, you realize that you're doing the wrong thing, and you realize that there's all this emotion building up inside of you, and you're letting it out. That's very good, but you need to change direction. All right, now the higher self feels that she is ready to change direction. Now, who is this real estate lady? Well, the real estate lady, to me, anything to do with real estate is to do with the earth because that's a grounded feeling. Somebody who deals with buildings and property and so on. Yeah. Okay, they're to do with being grounded. They have a very complicated job when you buy and sell a house. If we, anybody who's done that knows how difficult that can be. And at the same time, you have to go through a whole lot of paperwork to get this thing done. But there's the real estate lady to help you. So she's down to earth. She's grounded. She knows what to do. And she's trying to comfort the dreamer. And so she doesn't get the ticket. She comes out of there feeling like better because as she walks down the sidewalk to her car, she hears music playing. And the music is coming from a clubhouse. The clubhouse is closed, but the music is being piped outside. Now, music in dreams is usually a very happy thing. Music is considered to be uplifting. It brings us out of ourselves. It's creative, artistic. It's a higher form of art, okay? So she hears this music. The clubhouse is closed. In other words, she's not in there yet. She will get there. But this music is telling her that things are going to feel better. It's going to work out the way you want it to. And it's, to me, it says... You're being shown that it's possible to have a happier time if you can move away from the negative stuff that you were stuck in, the memories of the bad marriage, right. the pain and all that stuff you had to go through, and so on. And this music is saying it doesn't have to be the same. Now then she is walking, remember, to the car, and she sees some ornate cactus in the subdivision. Ornate cactus, some really special looking cactus and what is a cactus but a plant that is a survivor very hardy it survives in the worst yeah the worst conditions i mean out there in the desert it 
you know, you've been through the Swarrow Desert in Arizona. Sure. Where there's cactus that look like people with their arms up in the air, you know. And they can survive freeze, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. they are hard. They survive. They can get through this. And she's in a tough place, but she's a survivor. And it's a symbol of herself when she sees this. And it's ornate. And she's a very attractive woman. It would suit her perfectly. She has a wonderful personality. She's energetic, lively, laughs a lot. But a lot of that, of course, is the outer part of her. The inner part is what she went through to bring up her kids. Right. We're all doing well and, and all grown up now. So I think the dream is saying, it's okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, it's going to work out. You're going to get married. You're going to have a better life. It'll not be like it was before. Allow your higher self to guide you into this place. Well, I can tell you that she has just had her first year anniversary, and she's very happy, uh, and her husband is wonderful. That's terrific. That is great, yeah. Oh, we're in a good place there. So perhaps in the dream, could the jail that she felt she was going to, could that have been memories of the past, like you're going to be um, imprisoned in another bad marriage? Was that symbolic of the past? Yes. Well, it all starts out with the past, you see, with the ex-husband, who is mean. It starts out with him, so it's like, wait a minute, I remember what it was like before. Is it going to be like that again? Yes. You see, and so it starts out with that. And then, of course, she's going down the street the wrong way in the car, and the authority figure comes up and says, stop it. I'm going to punish you for being stupid and doing this. It's dangerous. And this tussle goes on inside of us. The big thing is that dreams are there to help us. They give us messages on how to improve our lives or change direction or whatever. And if that dream had said, this was very much like the man that she's going to marry, the dream wouldn't have said, go ahead, change direction, you're going to be okay. You know, I mean, this is a good dream for her. And it, it was right. She is having a happy marriage. That's great. And I love that she documented her dreams because now she can look back on it with your help and see what that inner dialogue was trying to tell her. So if she has another dream like that, she can kind of start putting two and two together. <laughs> oh, yes, and I've had several dreams from her. And next time we'll do the next dream, which was last year when she was married, about another problem she was having. So we'll leave that one for now. I'll look forward to it. Well, it's always a pleasure to hear your insights on those little nighttime vignettes and stories yes. that we have that can just seem so mundane, but oftentimes they use silly little pictures and images and plays on words, but they have some deep, serious meaning oftentimes. So you're always shedding a light on that, Yvonne. I appreciate well, thank it. Thank you, Chris. Um, I know that they've helped me tremendously, and I have been writing my dreams down for decades. Yeah. I've got all these books filled with dreams that I've dipped into for, for this program, too. Absolutely. But um, they've helped me tremendously, and I know not to ignore them. But if you need help, there are plenty of good books out there. There are other people who do this, or they can send us the dream if somebody wants to. Absolutely. Send it to you, and we'll have a look at it. Send it to me at risingactionmedia at gmail.com, and we'll look into it at a future time. Yes, we will. Wonderful. Well, you take care, Yvonne, and we'll be in touch later this spring. Thank you very much, Chris. Take care, dear. Bye-bye. Reawakening with Chris Mann and Yvonne Reba is a Rising Action Media production. Copyright 2016 by Chris Mann.